Wait till you get into a football locker room. Oh, I bet you saw big Oh, um, dude. What's Brady's dick like? Let's go viral. Bert, Bert, <laughs> you're, Do you ever see Tom Brady naked? I mean, we yeah. <laughs> we, you know? You're what the locker room likes to call a <sighs> National Geographic bird watcher, aren't you? I'm a hog. We call it a hog watcher. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, hey, we got National Geographic bird watcher over here. Watch out, boys. I'm fascinated by what's happening in the sports media landscape these days. Because you're part of the traditional, but you're also a part of the new format. Yeah. Like, do you do, are you following this shit with Pat McAfee and ESPN? So I I, I don't know what what's fully going on. Yeah. I, I I heard that there's some sabotage. Yeah. Between some suits, the older generation of guys that are battling with the new people of the new media world, as you spoke of, uh, that there's probably some rumblings. I I, I know that. You know, they made a lot of changes to probably get McAfee there. They, they, they let go a lot of people. Yeah. You know, so I bet you, you know, the people that made that decision and are seeing the numbers, like the internet game and podcast world and having your own show world is a completely different game than TV. Oh, entirely. You, you know that. Well, you, you are... I mean, honestly, I, I feel like you have a clip going viral every week. <laughs> like, you're just so good. You're, first of all, you're an amazing interviewer. You really are. I, 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 feel, I don't think I am quite yet. I watch interviews. Well, I'll tell you, I'm not because I interrupt people <laughs> nonstop. Same. I, no. I, I interrupt I'm... and I, I call people the wrong name. <laughs> and I don't know how to read. So it, it's it's a terrible recipe for success, but you just you know, that's my it, business model. <laughs> I can't read either. I, you know, I'm still waiting on the teleprompter stuff. Oh yeah, I'm still waiting <laughs> on a damn teleprompter. I've been practicing just in case I get a random text from you. So I've been sitting there. And you know how I practice? I read to my daughter. We just started chapter books, and yeah. like, I'm not a reader. So I'm sitting here, and I used to be the guy that counted the pages, how many pages I got for the. So I'm, that's my way of practicing is is reading these stories to my daughter, yeah. just in case the teleprompter <laughs> text comes through. Uh, we, did you see you see Cat Williams interview where he said he uh, he reads three thousand books a year. No, but I heard is that was that on Shannon Sharp? Shannon Sharp, but look at like look what Shannon Sharp's doing. That's been everyone has been talking about that. Is, I haven't I haven't watched it. Have you? Oh fuck yeah! I gotta watch. I've it. watched it. Three times. You know, it's 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 so hard to balance everything at this time of the the, the you know the the calendar because it's playoff football. Yeah. And and right now with Fox, I'm I'm doing kickoff, and I we have the podcast. So like I don't get to dive deep deep into stuff like I want to, especially right now, just because I gotta watch all these games. So is that, what is that? Because I always wondered. I, I get jealous of like guys like you and uh, busting with the boys and the Kelsey brothers and McAfee and Shannon Sharp because well Shannon does more of like a traditional just internet interview yeah but like you guys always have stuff to talk about like we have to force we have to force Thank you. fucking I mug. do a, I want yeah not it's bad a good mug I'm a mug guy really yeah I don't know why I like I have a bunch of different mugs and whenever you do like the the shows or something like the, you get like a, a, a Fallon mug oh, or, you know, yeah. I, I like collected mugs. My mom always had mugs. Like I got my daughter's mug, you know, I like have, a soccer team. I have one you, mug. What is it? One mug that I really well, cherish. two mugs and we're at your place. So yeah. that's, a, that's a full <laughs> online right there. It's better than a teacup. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, we, I have a mug I got from David Letterman when I did David Letterman. Letterman? Yeah. That's an awesome mug. And I remember my wife brought it out to me i was in i had just gotten at the, within the same week i did letterman was fired from travel channel for the first time and i got a man cave built by tony saragusa and goose, goose. this is r.i.p did you ever meet goose no but i love goose he i'm was, a fox guy and and you know we're talking about tv i mean goose was, was awesome fucking epic he was epic he showed up for man caves he did very little he did very little <laughs> He had a trailer parked out in front of my house. Inside it was uh, 
was who's the guy that OJ killed his wife and then went and was renting the back house? Cato Kalen was in it. <laughs> and then Goose was like, you want to just come and smoke pot with us? And I was like, yeah. And he told me, he goes, you know how much money we're giving you? I said, no. And he goes, $160,000. Do you know why? I said, no. And he goes, I edit his name out. And he goes, I hate that fucking guy. And he goes, he was supposed to get a man cave and I didn't like him. So I said, fuck it. Let's give all the money to Bert. I give it to Bert. So I doubled your man cave. You got two man caves. We gave it all to you. It's all yours. That's yours. Don't Good ever forget guy. that. And I was like, wow. He was real inspirational, especially for me right now in, in where I am in my career. Where you're in the transition from sport to your next life. Yeah. And to see a guy like the Goose, Tony Saragusa, you know, he was a, a phenomenal football player. And to see him transition, but it was like on his own terms of how he transitioned. He got to be himself. He got yeah. to go out and and still have his football job, but be around us because I know he's a big family guy, big, right? Yeah. Big family guy. So, you know, and and still bring success to his his life through other avenues yeah. you know that that's so cool and i i mean i don't know him personally i have never met him but i always remember watching him on you know the sideline fucking cracking jokes oh he was and you're, great. you're always drawn to the tv anytime you talk you saw it's tony saragusa i mean anytime you see a big lineman that's funny that's just i just i gravitate towards that i only it's like a sun with a little so <laughs> it's like a solar system they're all, gravitational pull linemen linemen are my favorite NFL players to meet. Oh yeah. They are they are always we did uh the beer Olympics at Taylor Luan's house. Yeah. David Bakhtahari, I forget. Bakhtiari. Bakhtiari was there. Yeah, yeah. Ba, he's cool. And then the guy who won it. I wish I knew the guy who won it. Uh the guy who won the beer Olympics. It was my favorite conversation ever. He's on his phone with his wife. Uh black dude. See who won the beer Olympics this year. You'll know him. He's I yeah. think he's like an all pro. And he's on the phone with his wife and I was he's like, "Yeah, my wife I'm leaving the family for this. And I was like, oh. And he's like, oh, shit, it's my wife. And he was like, hey, what's up? And she was like, did you start yet? And he was like, no. She goes, you better fucking win. And he was like, oh, honey, I will. And he goes, she goes, I didn't send you there to fucking lose. You fucking win that beer Olympics. And she hung up. And I was like, oh, fucking savages hang out with savages. Like, she's a fucking bad motherfucker. DeForest, DeForest Yeah, I mean, he's he was a legend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, you know it, it's kind of like... I don't know why, but hearing a wife like that, and it's very similar with all Lyman's wives. They all run the house. Yeah. It's like a Lyman, their overall life, they're there to protect someone, but they never get the credit. And they never, and they never get the last word. <laughs> they're never in the newspaper. Yeah. It's with their wife, like wife said, hey, you better go home and win it. Like quarterback. Quarterback goes in the huddle. We, hey, we got to get this. They just sit there. Happy to do their job and fucking just make the world go. Because honestly, games are won in the trenches. Yeah. And those guys are such fucking... I always loved them because I was a former quarterback. You know, so I'd always hang out with linemen. You know, and, and then I got to the league and I was a receiver. But, you know, I, I would go over to Logan Mankins and, and, or, or Steve Neal. And these, these guys, you know, the big hogs. And, and they're always in their own little area. All the linemen always... They're quiet. They're always doing their own thing in the locker room, you know, and they're always together, all yeah. five, six. And then you have like the couple guy, like the, the starting line is together. And then they allow a couple of the other guys to just kind of, if they're getting some reps, if you're maybe a swing tackle, that's one of the tackles that goes back and forth or like a 13 personnel tackle. That's yeah. one of the extra tackles they bring in, you know, on like a run play where you have three tackles. Like, they always let that guy in, but, like, it's their own thing. They're in their own world. They're crazy pranksters. Matt Light. <laughs> I mean, Matt Light, I don't know if I could tell this story, but he he was such a prankster. He, he put this thing into Dante Scarnecchio's computer, and... We all so we have we have team meetings, then we break up into offense, defense, then everyone has their own room. Like and the linemen have their own room where they go and break down film, receivers have their room, running backs, etc. And so when you go down to your own film room, you know, Scarnecchio would be in there and, and the linemen were just I mean, he would he was a tough coach. Yeah. So they needed something. And so Matt Light 
put a, a fucking, he ordered something on the internet where he put it in the computer and it would fuck with the mouse because he sat right by, <laughs> he sat right by the computer and you have the over the projector that's projecting. <laughs> and so Scar, Scar's an older guy. Yeah. And so Scar would go in there. God damn it. What the fuck? <laughs> he said, God damn it, Jared. Jared. Jared's the guy who runs the tech for the whole fucking, the whole building. Yeah. And, and football coaches love to hate technology people. Let me just tell you. They love yelling at technology people. They love yelling at and breaking technology. That's just what they fucking do. Yeah. So Light and all the linemen are sitting there and they're all kind of giggling. And 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 then, and then he pulls it out of the computer and then it works. And he's got three tech people. He had that thing. He had that prank going for fucking six months. He had to finally take it off because Scarnecchio was about to call XO, which is the software provider for the fucking service that we use. We were about to take it down. And he was motherfucking the guy who who made the software for football. So we were like literally as an, a business about to transfer <laughs> software groups, which is like a that's a big business yeah. because he put this little thing in that fucked with the mouse. <laughs> And he had him go. And I don't think Coach Scarnecchio to this day knows that Matt Light did it. But he was that that kind of guy. And then there was another prank he did where he, he was fucking with Brady or something. I think he he took all of his tires off of his uh, car and hit them in every so, uh, different parts of the fucking stadium. So he had to find that, kept it on cinder blocks. And then there was another time where he told me, and and all the boys told me he had a friend and I won't say no names or anything, but he made him believe that he had AIDS <laughs> for like two years. He got doctors involved. He had, I mean, what a fucking sick joke. This guy, he made it, he made, he, this guy went out, had unprotected sex and he went out and Matt Light found out and fucking had him go to the doctor. Like, he had everyone involved. This guy's over here, like, about to think he's dying. And Light's crying, kept it going for, like, a year and a half. That's the kind of, that's the kind of shit you get from Lyman. Those sick oh, fucks. Is, is football, do you think football, what do you think is the funnest sport to play just with the people around? Because you play baseball, too. Baseball is fun. Baseball's fun. Baseball because there's a lot of downtime in baseball, so yeah. you get a lot of fuck around time. Yeah, in the locker room, in the dugout, a rain you know, out, a rain out, a I rain out. My, uh, I, I think I've found my sense of humor. I found my sense of humor at an all boys Catholic school. Yeah, but playing baseball, our coach one time <laughs> made T-shirts that <laughs> this said, uh, <laughs> this said. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I'm probably gonna fuck this up. Sixty percent hard work, fifty percent inspiration, or something. But it didn't. It added up to one hundred and ten. He wanted 110 to give percent coach. He wanted, he wanted to give, give him one hundred and ten percent. That's such a fucking coach. And, and I remember Dean Kent, who ended up playing at, at Florida University of Florida, got this shirt. He goes, this is, the number doesn't add up. It's 110. There's only 100% that you can give. Coach, like, you don't get it. There's an extra 10%. And Dean Kent goes, yeah, you're retarded. <laughs> it, it's, you, put, you put 10 for 10 retardation because you didn't do the math right. He, that coach walked around naked all the time. But baseball, like when, on a rain out, when they'd be like on a rain delay, when and, and I remember Coach Kent, Dean's dad coached at Chamberlain, and he was like, uh, Chrysler, get out there and do something. I was like, what? And he's like, I don't know. Fucking entertain us. He goes, give me your best Babe Ruth. And so I did this. You know the, how the old things were like the quick swing and then the quick run? And I did it around the bases, and I remember everyone dying laughing. And I was like, that's my first sense of, oh, I, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I should be entertaining and not doing baseball. But baseball was funny shit. Oh, Coaches. baseball was fun. And it's a big prank. Baseball is a big prank sport, too. You know, you light someone's shit on fire. Yeah. Or you put the match on someone. You put the icy hot in the jock. Yeah. Like, all those things. I remember that. Or I remember when I was a kid, 15, we went to uh, Arizona. 
It was our first time away from our family. You know what yeah. I mean? You're 15 years old. You get two weeks away. You're on a baseball tournament. And so we had, you know, some time where we were all down and we we're all hanging out in a room. Someone brought an Xbox. We're playing Xbox. Some guy brings out a fucking tin. Oh. And, and this is for all those fucking people that think, because there's an article out there. I did a GQ article that said I had a cherry dip. And I think they missed, they missed, got, they missed, missed it up. But we went in there and they brought it. It was a cherry tin. It was a cherry flavored. I can I almost mean, tell you what year this was. I remember when Cherry School came out. What was that? It, I was, I was 20. I just turned 20, 21 or 20. So this was probably 30 years ago. How old were you? I, I mean, you were I'm 15? only 38. So. Oh, wow. I guess what? You weren't eight. <laughs> nah. Wait, Seven more years. Oh, I guess. You, I guess. I'm, I remember when it came First out. First came out. I remember when it came out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so they're passing around this dip, and I, I'd never done that stuff. And I have one in right now as we speak, which is I. I can. I do not. I'm back on. This I'm is back bad. On this is bad for anyone who listens. It's a terrible habit. It's so fun though. It is fun. It's not like taking a shawl with the boys and talking shop. There's nothing. It. 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 I would say it creates better conversations so there's something when it hits you where you get a little loose and you're like yeah fuck her <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well we're, we're sitting in there and they're passing it around and i and i didn't want to be the one not to do it i put that thing in for 10 minutes like five i put it in i'm like yeah i'm good <laughs> i'm good they're like you gotta spit i'm starting i'm spitting all of a sudden your first time doing it you get hot yeah. And you get dizzy. Ooh. I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, nah, man. I got to uh, I gotta go, guys. <laughs> and uh, I, I take it out. I, I take it out. And I fucking threw up for like three hours. I was in the shower. 15-year-old kid. <laughs> first time away from folks. Puking. Shower. Cold shower. And yeah, man. I, that, that's baseball. What got you back in the dip? Smell better naked this Valentine's Day, fellas. We always want to be prepared for the moment. You know, like when your junk smells like funk, it can ruin what's to come. That's why I'm excited for today's sponsor, Mando. Mando whole body deodorant is designed to tackle odor wherever it springs up. Put it on your pits, your package, your feet, and anywhere and everywhere in between. Mando's long-lasting, clinically proven formula controls odor up to 72 hours while the cologne quality scent will make you irresistible to anyone within smelling distance. Make the switch to Mando and smell great all day and all night and the next morning. I've been saying this forever. I don't know why they didn't have something to put on your balls. I've actually been saying this forever. And, and if you know me, I like, I like to, I like to get out, start my day. And sometimes my day bleeds into the next day. I've been using Mando. We have it here at the office. I put it on the first thing, thing when I get here and I smell awesome. And sometimes the next day I don't even need deodorant. And I, if, especially if I'm not showering. Mando's starters pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube, boom, and two free products of your choice. I chose the deodorant wipes and the mini body wash and free shipping. Luckily, I have a discount code to help you get hooked on my favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack using code BIRDCAST at shopmando.com. That's S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com. It's time to smell better naked. Your partner will thank you. This show is sponsored by DraftKings. Looking for a super offer? For Super Bowl 58, DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered. New customers can bet on the big game and turn 5 bucks into 200 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code BIRDCAST. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 58 with code BIRDCAST. The crown is yours. What got you back in the dip? Um, I started again when I was like 28, oh, really? 27. That was a, I didn't do it for a long time. 
Danny Amendola got me into dip. Really? Yeah, the gateway. I Danny him Amendola. The gateway. Danny Amendola was is like the first my first representation of hard knocks. Because <laughs> he got cut on hard knocks. He got cut on hard knocks. Yeah. I remember being like, "Well, oh, I love that guy." Yeah. And then he shows back up. And you're like, "Fuck yeah, Danny Amendola's back!" What a career. Yeah. He's a stud. He's over with uh, the Raiders right now. He he just uh, coached his first year. He retired last year. The guy had a hell of a career. Holy shit! He played, uh, I think, fourteen years. Crazy. That's wild. But um, I got back into it because. Every year before we report, we have to report usually the week of Coachella. You know, Coachella week, it's yeah. usually like April 13th, 14th. For some odd reason, in my fucking head, the day after Coachella's report date. So I never got to go to Coachella because for a month before report date, I like to fuck. I would always get in crazy shape. You know, I would start usually around St. Patty's Day, which is what? March 17th. 17th. So I, I would give myself a month where I wouldn't drink. Uh, and then back then they used to test for marijuana and you could be randomly tested. So you had to stop around what? You had to stop April 1 because you could get tested technically, you know, I think like May 1 and then it's random. And then once you get tested, you were done. Oh, really? So you had to be clean for a while. As soon as you got that test, then you could start smoking again. They just wanted to see if you're clean. So it was kind yeah. of a bullshit test. And anyone who ever really, like, got suspended for marijuana in the past, like, you had to fail, like, 80 tests. <laughs> so <laughs> they put you in a program, like, like it's, it's bad. You got a problem. Yeah. Which we're not here to make any light of. Yeah. But, yeah, for people that are saying, oh, these guys, why are you testing for marijuana? Like, it's a joke test. And yeah. it's even gotten to a bigger joke. But go back to our story. I, I, You have to stop smoking. I wasn't drinking. And I was training. And I was sitting there. And I was bored as fuck. And, and I go and play golf with Danny over in Studio City at that little nine hole. Yeah. Where you bring like one club and a fucking putter or whatever. <laughs> and, he, and he pulls out a 10. He hits it. And he goes, you want one? I'm like, nah, dude, I can't do that, dude. I'll fucking throw up. I did it when I was 15, like 10 years ago. Fucking threw up for four hours, never do it again. It was, Stop being a pussy. <laughs> so I, I, fuck you. Give me one. I put it in and I started feeling it. I took it out again. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm cool. I'm cool. And from that day on, I, I just started dipping again. I quit. I quit when I moved to New York mm -hmm. because, uh, I, you couldn't buy it in New York. You couldn't buy a uh, dip in New York. And I dipped all. When? Uh, God, I fucking sound like an old man. In 19. Because they got dip in New York now, but 1997. It's 1997. Now they don't sell any flavored dip there. Uh, they don't sell flavored. They don't sell the flavored dip. They don't sell flavored Zins in California. Or dip here either. I yeah. get my, I have to get it shipped in from Canada. What do you dip? Know. Copenhagen wintergreen. Long God. cut. Copenhagen stuff. I like the old school. It smelled like armpits. Oh, yeah. It's like my dad. <laughs> I love that. That's just straight. Yeah. I was, Where my, it was like sawdust. I, I was so addicted. Fine cut. Oh, I was so addicted that I would buy cans and just smell them. Oh. The smell brings me back to like, it brings me back to all my favorite memories as a kid. <laughs> it's like you get out on a golf course, everyone have a couple of beers, someone pass around a tin, and you'd be like, yeah, let's fucking talk shit. Yeah. It was the best. It's the best. And I was a hardcore addicted. Moved to New York. They didn't sell it, so I just quit. And then I quit, and I didn't think about it. And then fucking Segura. We're doing a podcast, and he goes, he's like, uh, have you ever tried Rogues? I said, what's that? He said, it's, uh, it's a pouch. It's just the nicotine. I said, uh, I've been flirting with it, but I haven't done it. And he goes, you should try it. And I put a Rogue in, and I'm back. I'm doing I'm like, and it's, they're just milligrams of nicotine Yeah, and they make you dizzy and you feel good. Yeah. And then if you have too much to drink, it makes you spin a little bit. So you slow down your drinking. Yeah. It's the fucking best. The thing is with those, those pouches, I get heartburn with it. You'd think I get heartburn with real dip. Yeah. But I, cause you don't spit. So no. I, you know, it goes in. Do you I, spit? Cause I I'm spit. Yeah, I spit oh, is that what? You, yeah. yeah. I spit a little. The, uh, my, my introduction was Hawkins. Hawkins was the first dip I ever had with Russ Matthews, Blake Casper, Alan Rieger, just outside Katie Peeper's house. 
and they all passed it around. They're like, you want to try it? And I was like, oh, all the cool kids were doing it. Yeah. And in, in, in at in all boys Catholic high school, all the coaches would come up to you. You got a tin on you? Yeah. And you'd be like, yeah. And then they'd take one of your tips. <laughs> and, uh, Man, how times have changed. Well, because everyone had the hard ass coach that had a big ass dip in his hand that fucking grabbed your face mask and he's yelling at you and you got fucking dip all in your face and shit. That was sports. That was Coach Hester. They, <laughs> could, talk, they could hit you back then. Yes. <laughs> Oh, they really could. They, they they could, and you saw them naked, and there was like, I mean, Co- Coach Sayo had one ball, and I mean, that was like the one thing when you were like freshman, they're like, heads up, Sayo's going to shower, he's got one nut. Yeah. And you're like, okay. Well, coach Nicolopoulos, <laughs> head coach, shout out coach. Yeah, it, coaches, uh, they always like to show off if they have a big dick. <laughs> My guy would wear some fucking skin. He wear these shorts, and I I swear to God, he'd be over here leaning in front of the team. Got you'd see his big ass. I'm like, damn, coach, <laughs> we're fucking high school. Can you put that thing away? <laughs> when we were in ninth grade, the very first day, all boys Catholic high school. There, we get done PE, and the, and I remember, I think it was Coach Sayo walked in, and he was like, all right, hit showers, and I'd walked past the showers, and the juniors and seniors were in there, and they had cocks. And I had a penis and I was terrified. And I swear to God. And I, this is, I feel this is like a weird thing to say. Now I went into the, to the toilet and I worked up a chub to get into the shower. <laughs> Cause I was like, I can't bring this thing in there. You're a baseball man. Wait till you get into a football locker room. Oh, I bet you saw big dicks. Oh, dude. First off. Uh, What's Brady's dick like? Let's go viral. Bert, Bert, <laughs> you're, Do you ever see Tom Brady naked? I mean, we yeah, <laughs> we, you know. But the thing is, you're what the locker room likes to call a <laughs> National Geographic bird watcher, aren't you? I'm a hog. They, we call it a hog watcher. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, hey, we got National Geographic bird watcher over here. Watch out, boys. <laughs> no, Brady was the kind of guy where he would sit in the corner. <laughs> Because, you know, you got the right angle and there's showers on every corner. This motherfucker would have two showers hitting him at once. Really? So, like, there'd be people waiting and you see, and, and Tom would have these two fucking shower heads hitting him. He's got his little fucking shower. He'd have, like, his little tool belt kit thing that he'd bring with, with all his little fucking smell goods and his body of potions. And he'd, he'd walk it in and put it on there. And he'd have, like, his exfoliation shit and hit his thing. Like, he was... <laughs> He was funny. Really? Who had the big dick on the Patriots? <laughs> <laughs> My guy was so embarrassed too. He was so <laughs> humble about it. He would he would get so embarrassed because guy, guy guys what the fuck a new oh, guy in the wow. team he wore shorts in the shower because guys he he made guys would be like what the <laughs> yeah and and his his poor, his poor little wife is a little. <laughs> I never got it. I just wanted to go give her a hug and say, I don't know how you do that, sweetheart. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's impressive. Uh, who was the play for the Cowboys? Leon Lett? It looked like a baby's arm. It was literally probably, it was, it had to be 14 inches soft. There was the guy who... Which makes me think, does it get even bigger? I don't think they get bigger. I think that's the thing. There's dudes who have big dick soft. And then there's guys like me who get bigger. Grower. Versus, I'm a, yeah, I'm a grower, hardcore grower. grower. Like I'm not you, a shower, babe. I'm a grower. <laughs> if you saw, I pulled my dick out one time <laughs> at our fraternity house and, and uh, it got the biggest laugh I've ever gotten in my life. I, my dick's so small, soft. One time I was in the gym and I was taking my pants off at the same time someone was telling a joke across the room and the punchline hit as my pants dropped and I thought they were laughing at my dick. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I would say I'm average. Yeah. yeah. They say average is five inches. Oh, I'm bigger than that. I'm, I'm bigger than that. I measured the other day with my wife. If you do. But I, I don't think that average is correct because I look up in that goddamn locker room that I'm at. I'm like, these. Yeah. this must be an extraordinarily over average <laughs> population. You are with you are with the high achievers. Yeah. They, God gives <laughs> big dicks to the ones he wants more of. Man, I remember I had to go out. And I, I had to do that bodies issue where you, you do oh, make yeah, it yeah. with ESPN. I think I know the guy that shot that. It was, no, I had a lady. 
Oh, really? Yeah. She, I had a lady. Um, and, you know, that's a little intimidating. You know, you're sitting there. You're like, uh, you know, they ask you, you want to do this naked cover body shoot thing? I'm like, yeah, all right, whatever. Like, it's going to be a small set. Yeah, it's small set. Five, six, you know, three, four people. It's going to be very intimate. Roll up there. There's like 40 people. I'm sitting here bare knuckle berry with my dinghy hanging out. <laughs> fucking doing these like jump shots and stuff. And like they, you would cover it, right? They would cover the picture. Like you're doing like a jump with like a fucking, we had like a helmet or a fucking hat or something. Look at the women automatically are good. The one time I've never asked them to Google something. <laughs> you know, like I do that. And so you go and and we go talk to the photographer and and we're looking at like the samples and we're looking at the shots and Jesus all this Christ, what was your body fat at that point? Uh see that shot right there, that one where I'm flying over the city? Yeah. So I remember doing that shot and we would go look at the pictures when they were done, and I'd be holding it and my dick would be hanging out. <laughs> and I'd be sitting there and there's like three people looking at my dick. I'm like, they're like, Don't worry, we can edit that out. We'll get that out. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, oh my God, what the <laughs> fuck is going on here? But it was so, it was so, I was like, it's cold out. You know, I had to, <laughs> I had to make a, a quick joke to Jesus let everyone. Jesus Christ, you were ripped. Still am, bub. Yeah. yeah, you are. I saw your tricep when you took your shirt off. I was like, <laughs> that's fucking legit. You lose another, you lose another 20 since I saw you? Yeah, yeah. You look good. Thank you. My shoulders. You, you been, you even still sob? Yeah. No, no, no. I uh, uh, Selective sob? Selective. I partied last night, but I didn't, I, I've been picking my shots. Yeah. Like, we're going to Mexico this week to see the Grateful Dead. Ooh. Yeah. Goose is playing with them. And I kind of knew yesterday our buddy Jake Johnson come over to do a podcast, and he wanted whiskey. And I was like, I'll have some whiskey. Went to a party last night. Met Anna Kendrick. I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Did some shots. And then I'll probably party this weekend and then go back sober when I go on the road. Yeah. But uh, I did like uh, I did like three months, no booze, lots of weed. <laughs> lots of weed. Did you feel clear? Oh, More clear? The I clearer in and my daughter pointed this out to me I was not I was very present everywhere mm -hmm. and I could really assess joy and like happiness I think weed helps with that too yeah is it really like I always say like weed will whisper to you like man, you got a nice backyard and you're like fuck yeah I do like look at these trees man they've been waiting for you yeah this whole they've been growing this whole time so you could appreciate the wind going through them and you're like thanks weed you ever do mushrooms? Fuck yeah. You microdose? No. Uh. No, I I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> just I overdose. <laughs> oh, we didn't do drugs the right way as kids because we just did the. <laughs> you say that that's kind of a that sounded boomery. It, we really? didn't do drugs. <laughs> you guys smoking that dope? <laughs> hey kids, you smoking that dope? Wait, how old were you the first time you smoked weed? Um, I tried it. When I was like 14, yeah. 15, I did it once and I didn't like it. I got really stoned and I ate so much. I went to Quiznos with my buddy and I ate a, like an extra large sandwich. I ate so much fucking food that I threw up. Like I must be hypersensitive to this shit, yeah. but like, you know, I, I didn't like it. I didn't do it. I didn't pick it up until once again, Danny Amendola. For real? Yeah, fucking Amendola, the gateway, bubs. <laughs> I want to party with Danny Amendola. Jesus, no. Nah. You ever do poppers? <laughs> sure, Danny. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I, I did it in, I started doing it in the league because you stop drinking. Yeah. Because drinking fucks you up for recovery. Yeah, you know, with with You know, with weed, after work, you know, you're done. You, you get to sit and you, you smoke. It kind of lets you, it would let me like, Stop thinking about the day and and everything. It let me unwind and and kind of give my mind a break. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because during a you know the grind of a season, it's fucking. You think about your opponent. You're thinking about practice. You're thinking about what you need to get better on. Fuck my leg hurt. You know, there's so much shit going on. Oh, I got a life outside of football. I got to take care of too. Oh. So, you know, I started doing it probably, you know, my sixth seventh year in the league. And then, you know, kind of transitioned to doing that. And I, I stopped drinking during the seasons and stuff just because the older you get, you start trying to get a little more and more edge here and there. And, you know, you work on your sleep, even though the weed was kind of messing with your sleep. But yeah, it, it's good for your sleep the first at the beginning. It's not great for your REM. 
Oh. And that's where you get your your real recovery is in your deep sleep, your REM. Yeah. So like, you know, that's like the best thing you can do for anything is 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 your sleep. So like we would do a bunch of sleep studies where you go into like a a facility and they would put all these wires on you to see your your heart rates and if you move when you're sleeping because you you really want to try to dial your sleep in. That's where you get your best, you know energy output if, if you recover them like your best recovery tool is your sleep and your I, rest i track my sleep yeah. now and if i drink my heart rate is high when i sleep drinking and you know that fucks with your rem so you know you get away from that when you were playing in the off season you know, as the older you get like i would have fun nights like in the off season but like you're always trying to get back on so you the smoking was was always the thing that I did. Do you remember any of your stats? Like, what was your resting heart rate when you were playing? I had a low resting heart rate. I had, like, the lowest on the team for a long time. I was resting at, like, 39. I had, like, a marathon runner heart. Seguro's got a low resting heart yeah, rate. Like, I always said because he's dead And I could, o- <laughs> I could always tell how good a shape... Because you'd always do your, your physical when you came in, and they would always check that. You'd do the EKG, and... I mean, you're fucking... You're an investment to the team, so they want to see what the product's always, yeah. you know, looking like after each year, before each year. And and that's where I would always see if, like, my best heart, resting heart rate was like a 39, which is fucking, the, you know, like, the doctors would look at you like, yeah, you gotta. That was like a cool thing. Scarnecchio, Dante Scarnecchio, our old, um, the old line coach, that's the legend everyone talks about. He had a real low resting heart rate as well. Really? And he was like 78, but he used to swim every morning. Like he was disciplined as fuck. If you have good cardiovascular health and like you're like in really good, your your CO2, like all that is yeah. is in great shape, you usually have a really low resting heart rate. Mine right now is 52. Yeah, it's, that's is, good. It's not bad. But if I'm drinking, it's 72, which yeah. is not. I, I That's the only, like, it, it sounds crazy. The older I get, I look at my stats and I start going like, oh, right now my heart rate's probably yeah. 90. I can't, you know, I haven't, I haven't really looked at mine, but if I were to look at it, I would see what kind of shape you're in. Really? Because that's, that's, oh, that's what, I mean, I've seen it at the high. Yeah. And you know, when you're in your peak physical shape, you know, that's when you'd always see your resting heart rate would be at the lowest possible. Could you just, did like, what was the, I know, like, I was just telling someone in an interview today, Ron Bennington, that like, I got a wellness doctor that I go to. Yeah. And I get all my, I, it's kind of nice because yeah. like. I go to Austin and I'll, I'll they do blood work and then yeah. they kind of, but was is that what the football was like? Would you go in and they'd be You'd like, have to do that outside of the, like the team would have their resources where you would do blood work and they could see the inflammation factors and they could taper your diet towards what your blood results showed. A lot of guys would go outside of, you know, in the off season, everyone had their own kind of thing. If, if, if you were uh, in different areas, some guys would outsource that. Yeah. So I would always use the teams and then I had, you know, I had a couple guys, I, you know, I would work with uh, TB12, you know, they would always, they were a huge like body coach type uh, guru type people that, that yeah. whole, Alex Guerrero. So his whole thing was really on what you eat and, and, and body work and movement and flexibility and pliability and, you know stressing your body the right way in functional strength type stuff with bands I think you know, so. I, bands exhaust me well it because it, it, it's hard yeah. you know you got to use all those little muscles for that you know you, yeah it's i mean i've anything with the body bless you um anything with the body i mean when you're when your career is your body yeah I mean, if you're not a person that doesn't know everything about what you're trying to get out of it, I mean, I mean, I've done everything from, you know, your your sleep studies to your blood work to this, you know. Yet yeah, you you want to find so you can see if you can get a an edge on something. I think that's fast. I would I would have loved that portion. Could you go into the doctor and be like, "Yo, can I get some Xanax?" No, they used to have basically like a little pharmacy in in the facility. Oh, I'd love that. You know what I mean? And and. Early in my career, after a game, trainers would be like, "Hey, do you, you want to?" It was kind of like that. You need a, you need anything for pain? You need anything for sleep? They'd walk down the plane and, and pass shit out. Oh fuck yes! But I'd after like that, it in the cold beer. Yeah, 
you know, a lot of, you know, I never liked, I never liked the pills. It fucks up your shit schedule. Oh, uh, it does. It Dude, that's you. what got Matthew Perry. And that Perry. would fuck me up mentally. Matthew Perry had his, uh, I read, just read his book. His, he ruptured his colon because of sh not shitting from pain pills. Yeah. I don't, whenever I'd have surgeries and stuff, man, I would try to get off as soon as possible because I go crazy. I'm, I, I like my routine. I like taking a shit right when I wake up yeah. after my coffee, my dip, then I drink, you know, there's a whole fucking process to this thing. <laughs> shower. You know what I mean? If yeah. I can't, if I don't shit, I can't shower. <laughs> it fucks me up mentally. I'm not a big showerer. <laughs> yeah. I, I go up in Florida though. We consider pools a shower. Yeah. If you had a saltwater pool. Oh, no, I don't. There's, we can't have, I can't have one. I don't know why. I forget. I wanted a saltwater pool. I don't know. I've been getting kind of, I've been getting a rash on my armpit. I don't know if it's from my fucking hot tub or, you know, I've been, I've been gun ho. Yeah. I got a saltwater there. <laughs> the, all of a sudden, I'm getting these goddamn rashes. I'm sitting there. I go to this doctor and he goes, yeah, you got a hot, you have a hot water, like a hot, hot tub. I'm like, yeah, I got the salt water. I'm good, right? <laughs> like, he knows, you know. So I go to my pool guy. I'm like, yo, buddy, I'm getting fucking rashes on this shit. What's going on here? Do we, can we doll up this chemical thing? He goes, yeah. I barely put any in. So I'm sitting, I got a dilemma right now about that. I was talking to Segura one time. This is my favorite. Like, I always, I always say, I don't know why pe people think Tom's funny. Because I know why he's funny, but it's not what he shows people. So Segura's like, hey, have you ever had soft water? And I and I only have one real experience with soft I grew up with soft water. You what know, is soft water? So soft water is like, it's something they put in your water, your, your water tank. And it makes the water, it takes all the minerals out, but it makes it very slippery. It's real slippery, so you never. Is feel it like, filtered water? No, no, no. It's 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 for your shower and your house. I've heard of that. I think you gotta, you're rich. It's it's for rich people. Okay, yeah, it's yeah, for I've rich heard, people. I've heard that. But you can't get the soap off. It feels like you can't get the soap off. But it's real slippery. And he said to me, "Have you ever showered in soft in soft water?" And I had. I had one memory. I was with Leanne, and the water was so soft. And I told him, I was like, "Yeah." As a matter of fact, I don't remember where I was, but me and Leanne were together, and we had soft water. It was so soft that I couldn't stop touching her body in the shower. And I ended up jerking off and not needing anything. That's how soft the water was. I came all over that fucking shower and I watched the girl's face dip and he goes, it was my house. <laughs> and I went, oh, it was your house. <laughs> because you and Leanne stayed at my house, you motherfucker. <laughs> Old jelly, you left a jellyfish? Oh, all over the place. I was like, not my shower. <laughs> Clean it up, Segura. <laughs> you say it. You, uh, he, him and I have identical dicks. <laughs> Our dicks are identical. Identical soft. I've never seen his hard, but identical soft. Identical. Like I was looking in a mirror. We had a woman tether our dicks together one time with electrodes. And uh, did we, they shock at the same rate? And they, we were going to see who tapped out first. So we are about a foot from each other, we're face to face. We, our dicks are hooked up to one thing. She cooks at him and she starts clicking him and I'm watching him going, oh, it's rough. And I was like, I got it. And he's like, oh, I'm going to have to tap out soon. She's going higher and higher and higher. And then she gets to 10. He's like, I'm out. And he pulls it off. And then she looks at him and she goes, do you guys want to come? And Tom goes, no. And he goes, but if we did, how would you do it? And she goes, I have this vibrator outside. I can just make you guys come real fast. And Tom looks at me going, you answer that first. <laughs> No, wait, wait, wait. I don't get it. So why would you come after electrodes? She, because I guess you get stimulated and she got you to this place. And then she has a vibrator that she said she can make you come in like a minute. And we were Where so, did she put it on your taint? I have no idea. I We didn't do it. Oh. We didn't do it because we're fucking married. So we were like, no, we don't want to come. So, so, but we did it for a second. Is that we cheating with tools? I don't know. Is that cheating with tools? You know, I kind of wonder, like, uh, we, I was talking to my wife about strip clubs and- I have friends that think strip clubs are cheating. And then I go, no, they're not. What narts? Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. God, what a bunch of nerds. I thought, I thought you know, <laughs> kissing's basically a handshake. Huh? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and, oh, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I, uh, I, I don't like strip clubs. You don't like them? You gotta be, you gotta be really drunk for them. Oh, no. I, I mean, we grew up I in Florida. I got a daughter, so I sit there and I... Oh, yeah. You do one of those. I like, went through that period where you were like, you're like, ah, oh, this is someone's daughter. But I, I I will go. Yeah. I will go. I don't but go. I, I don't go a, as I don't much. like always. There's got, you have friends in the group that like look for the strip club. 
We're yeah. in a city. Yo, there's a strip. What? Yeah, it's can not we, my go-to. Can we just go to a restaurant and go find some bars? Yeah. We went to a strip club in Alaska. Uh, it's a really great strip club. It's called the Alaskan, Alaskan Bush Company. Now, is it daylight all the time? Yeah. Yeah. It, no, fun. no, no. It was dark all the time. Oh, dark we were, all the time. When we were that's there. better. Dark all that's the time. That's better. Yeah, it's such for that. For, for that, that's when you want strip clubs around is when it's dark all the time. I told, we were on tour and we were doing, I was doing the arena and so I had a bunch of people with me and I'd been to this place before. It reminded me of Yellowstone. Like it had a vibe. It's old. Pull up a picture of the Alaskan Bush Company. It, is, it, it seems like like dead wood. Like it's a, it's got a balcony, like a wooden plank balcony and everything's wood. Is there water? Uh, I, it feel, you know, it feels like you're getting a strip lap dance in a cracker barrel. Oh, wow. Like it really is. Yeah. That's it. The Alaskan. Oh, the it's like a Alaskan, saloon. Yeah. It's like an old saloon. So I tell the people that work with me, Victoria, I don't know if she's here today, but Victoria was there. By the way, that's, yeah. I mean, you're not going to be amazed by the strippers, but uh, it is Alaska. So they're running from something. <laughs> and so. How far is that? It's fucking very. I think it's like 6,000 miles away. Wow. It, never, you've never been to Alaska? No. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Alaska's fucking amazing. I always wanted to go after I saw that. What was that movie with um, uh, Ryan Reynolds where he was like the Kennedys of, and it was like some rom-com. Huh? The, was it that? Yeah, Sandra yeah. Bullock. Did Reed. they go to Alaska? I thought it was Vancouver. No, it was Alaska. It was Alaska. Alaska is. I wanted um, to go after. And that. all the men are men, like they're men, like because they gotta be. It's freezing. Well, it's it's just it's like it's they're all big. They all have like jet boats that draw like six inches of water. They all take you. We went off the grid in Alaska, and had one of the most amazing fucking experiences of my life. That's cool. We went to a glacier in Alaska and went rep uh, went repelling into a glacier they drop me down like 90 feet and then i'm gonna ice climb out of it and i get to the bottom and i hear and and it's loud and inside the crevasse i'm like what the fuck glacier just fell dude looks over the edge he goes you still there i said yeah and he goes all right let's get you out now i said what and he goes all right we're gonna pull you out get the fuck out of here <laughs> and i was like w and i went up to him and i said what would have happened if that was like close to me and he goes oh You'd just be gone. And I went, what? And he goes, if we just pack up the chopper and leave. He's like, there's nothing you can do for someone down there. I was like, holy fuck. And then I was like, we're doing shots of tequila off the glacier. So we, we took. Is that a vodka place? It, I don't know. I was feel the, like you're almost kind of Russia-y. Yeah. Oh, hardcore Russia. I think it used to be Russia. We bought it from the Russians. Did we buy it from them? I think so. The great uh, Seward Swally. I'm big into history these days. Well, the older you get, the more you get. Yeah. And Shane Gillis said it's the gateway to history podcast or the gateway to Republican, being a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> have you met Shane Gillis? I have. Where'd I meet Shane? I met him at the cellar. Really? I think so. I, I met him at the cellar when I went and saw Sam Morell. I used to, you know, I, oh, I'm that's right. friends with Sammy. And I went to go watch Sam perform and... I went over to the back room. We were drinking beers at the end of it. He fucking lost his shit on you, I bet. He, yeah, he was cool. He fucking. We were hammered, but he was cool as fuck. <laughs> I remember we were just jiving and I don't remember any like specifics that we talked about. No, I can I remember I can, he was, I, I've seen him do it to every football player in the world. I'll tell you how it started. He's from, where's he, Baltimore? He, no, he's from like the dirt part of Pennsylvania. Yeah, he's a pen. What, what was his squad? Steelers? Notre Dame. Notre Dame? He is obsessed with Notre Dame and the Eagles. Eagles. That's what it was. Eagles. Yeah, he's obsessed with the Eagles. And I, he, he, I honestly think he got into comedy to meet professional football players. <laughs> <laughs> like some people are about pussy. Like there were comics. I remember comics. I won't say their names, but there were comics that were just did comedy to get pussy. Right. I remember watching it fuck up their career when I was young is they do, if there were hot chicks in this room, they do whatever was the lowest brow material just to get the girls to laugh. So they get their numbers after at the end, for whatever reason, pussy was never my motivator. It was always drugs and alcohol. That was my thing. <laughs> like I, everyone's got their weakness. Mine's always been, I remember this is not going to make sense to you. There's a band called driving and crying when I was a kid. Kevin Kinney is his name, and he was in the room one night. He was fucking, he wrote some of the greatest goddamn songs. His solo album was fucking insane. And he was in the show, and I did my whole set to him 
so that he would want to drink with me afterwards. Like that's my yeah. motivation's always been that. And uh, I could never give a fuck about pussy on stage yeah. ever. But I think it's because I got shot down a lot in college, and so I just was like, I know that doesn't work for me. But that's what, but Shane's motivator is fucking football players. He'll tell you <laughs> stats of yours that you that you don't remember. And but he's but it's his thing. It's what he loves. Nah, yeah. I mean, P Pennsylvania people. That's that's football is up there with like God and family. Oh yeah. There are a lot of a lot of you know a lot of studly people that played you know football and sport. I mean, Joe Montana, Dan Marino. Who did you meet when you were playing? Did you ever meet someone that you geeked out over? Yeah, I mean, I geeked out pretty hard meeting Jordan and Jeter. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah you told me that story. Yeah, that was fucking great. I, I saw that go viral. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, you know, um, who else? I remember once is me and Amendola Super Bowl. <laughs> Danny Amendola needs his own podcast. <laughs> we went. We were at some Super Bowl party in New York in thirteen. And we saw DiCaprio. And I think DiCaprio is so fucking cool. Fuck yes. And like we were in an area with him and uh, we went out and tried to just kind of like, who are these guys? Who are these guys? And like, it was cool. It was cool that he heard us, but yeah, that was, that was, yeah. We okay. went there and had nothing to talk about. But, like, just wanted to see him. You know, when you, you get to, you know, a point in your craft where you have, a, you know, you, you've attained some success, you sit and you start looking at other people in different worlds, you know, and to see, you know what you put in your life to get where you're at. Yeah. To see people on those levels and, and, and the longevity that, you know, the guys that we've been talking about have had. I mean, that's, that's so impressive. And there's got to, like, that's, that's why you want to talk to them. Cause I want to see what, what makes them tick. Oh, you know what I mean? What, what is it? Cause clearly it's not money. It's f not fame. Mm -hmm. It's not that those guys, like there's something else, you yeah. know, is it the art? Or is it some, you know, like that's what, that's the cool thing that I would want to. I get fascinated by that. Yeah. I, I, Which I'm, I don't even know how to ask questions, but I, I would pick it up just being around it. Yeah. You can. You if can, they were open. I, I was obsessed with coaches for a period of time. I'm really obsessed yeah. with trying to, because you see everything on Instagram with these, these uh, influencers that are like uh, wellness and, 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 and like, I'm going to change your life. You got to get up and polar plunge every morning for the sunshine and. Now, I'm not talking about Huberman, but I'm talking about the ones that are fake, the yeah. ones out there. And I was like, you know, the the real badasses in the world are these coaches who can lead men to do great things beyond what they thought they could do. So I tried for a period of time to accrue knowledge from coaches. Yeah. But it's amazing, and I mean this with respect, but they, they some of them only know about their sport. Like they don't, they're like, in a weird way, like <clears throat> I talked to Coach Carroll and I said to him, like, just give me something. Give me something, like, to help me in my life. Like, what's a, a life advice? I couldn't understand what the fuck he said. <laughs> he said, it's the, the moments within the moments. You got to focus on those moments. Give yourself the moment inside the moment. Let that moment be yours. And I was like, the fuck are you talking about? And he just walked away. I was like, I wanted, like, push-ups or something. <laughs> I kind of get it. It's about the little moments and enjoying those moments. And there's going to be shitty moments, but enjoy the little moments that are even little wins, those moments. And if you enjoy those little moments, they turn into big moments. And that's why you're a professional athlete. Nah. Because I, I would have got the guy just, in the I've locker room going, coaches. I would the guy going, hey, did you see dick? <laughs> <laughs> nah, <clears throat> was Coach been... Belichick a good, like, what was he like a good, like, leader? Like a, like a, like a, like a, like a. Like Rogan's a great life coach. Like yeah. he's a great, he gives you great advice. Sometimes it's like Coach Carroll. He said to me one time, uh, be undeniable. We were in the back of the store and I was like, what the fuck's that mean? And he was like, be undeniable. 
Just that's all you need. To, you need to be undeniable. And I wrote it in my joke book, not knowing what it meant. And then like six months later, I got on stage and I put in so much hard work that I got on stage and it was effortless and it was great. And then Norm MacDonald was backstage. He told me I was funny. And then the guy that was supposed to follow me left. He didn't want to follow me. And I went, oh, so that's undeniable. Okay. Like, but Rogan's great. Yeah. What was Belichick like? Bill was, a, you know, for me, he he was a great leader. Yeah. Um, and my thoughts on leadership are people that are setting an example, people that are disciplined, people that make sacrifices, people that have those uncomfortable conversations. Not one not everyone wants to have that, but you know, leaders have to. And you know, Bill was in people that are prepared. And, and and all those things you saw Bill. You know, he he was very intimidating because he kept you on his toes. He kept you on your toes at all times. Yeah. You could walk into a team meeting and randomly he could call on someone and say Hey Ryan Allen, so what's who's the who's the who's the kick returner today? Who's the punter? Ryan Allen's the punter. What are what are some of uh, what are the some of the things we have to worry about with this guy? Oh, coach, he, you know he he's got a seventeen yard average. He's quicker than fast. He went to this, you know, like that's what he expects. Yeah, you know, so you're always on your toes around him, which you know, as a player, is not always fun. But it made you better. So is that a great lead? Like, f- it, fun wasn't always there. Mm-hmm. Production results were there. And that was because of the template that he put out. You know, he, he had a great system. He was, I thought he was a great coach. coach. Coach could go in and coach all sides of the ball. You know, different languages with, when he came over to the office sometimes because the defensive language is a little different. But he, he still... He could t- he could talk football and also so that's what showed me great leadership. He knew everything about everything. Now was he always in the know with like our game plan? You know, yeah, but it, you know that's what good leadership is. Preparation. He was always prepared. You never felt like you were underprepared. You saw his sacrifice and his discipline through his routine. <clears throat> Guy was like a machine. Yeah. You know, and yeah, there's a lot of shit that, you know, people talk about that weren't fun. And, 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 you know, there were times where you sit down and you're doing a contract with them and you're like, this is what I want. He goes, well, I'm not going to give you that. You're that, you know, that sucks to hear that, but that's business. Yeah. You know, so he gets a bad rap when people, you know, right, especially right now with, what's gone on these last three years since Tom left, you know, it's been, it's hard to replace gr- like all time greats at a lot of positions. You had the best tight end of all time, best quarterback of all time. Like, how do you replace that and think you're going to go win games right away? Yeah. You know, so he's got, he's getting a bad rap right now. I feel bad for my guy. It feels weird seeing this whole situation, what he's going through Yeah, with the, 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 the team and, and the, the lack there of success, the lack of success they've had. But, you know, I thought he was a great leader. Um, you know, and, and and he always put a premium on being a tough, smart football player that performed under pressure. That's what he always said. I want I want you guys to be a tough, smart football team that performs under pressure. We all hear the do your job. Mm-hmm. If we all do our job. As an individual, then collectively, the play will execute, and we'll we'll put ourselves in the best position to win. So you got to do your job well. But you know that's the kind of guy he was. He was very big on fundamentals, very, very detail oriented guy. I mean, he had to kind of patrol and see the whole thing. You know what I mean? And that's tough. You know, you, you see a lot of these situations and a lot a lot of what's going on in football right now. I mean, it, it's it's different now. 
You know what I it mean? It seems like there's a being a. It feels like with Coach Vrabel being fired yesterday or two yeah. days ago. If it, it feels to me like there's this change of guard happening, that like it just feels like things are changing. Well, yeah, it's because you know the player is a little different now, and 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 that's how it goes. You know, each older generation. I'm older. You know, now it's not my generation playing anymore. But when I first got in the locker room, guys were saying the same thing about me that I'm saying about the guys then. Yeah. You know, oh, look at this new generation. They're a little softer, a little about, a little more about them, you know. And then you magnify that with the whole social media and the INL uh, image, name, and likeness where these guys are making money in college and then they come in and, and it's hard to, you know, it's 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 harder to be a coach now. It really is oh, to, to be able, you know, with this whole college INL thing where guys are getting paid. It, and I'm all for players getting paid, but it, it, it's creating a free agency type player because they're free agents in college every year. Yeah. You're a free agent every year, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Then when you get to the league and you sign a contract and, 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 and it's only natural human behavior that guys are going to act like what they've been doing, mm -hmm. you know, then you get to there and, and it's harder to, you know, so right now with coaches in general, you know, you got to have a special group. You got to have, you know, a guy that kind of knows what's going on in this generation. Or, or, you know, a lot of these old time, you know, a lot of these old school coaches, you know, it's tough to get guys to, it's tough to herd the sheep now. Especially if you're, if you, either, you only know how to herd sheep one way. Without a doubt. And, and, and then all of a sudden you get brand new sheep that just want to fucking go run up the mountain. And yeah. you're like, fuck. I can't just use this candy cane stick anymore. No, it, you know it, the sheep. They want to go up that mountain now. They want to. They want to do what they want. You That's know, it, it's 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 going to be interesting to see in these next few years. You know, because of the INL and what what college football has become, and and just the transition of of what the player is now how coaches you're going to have to start seeing how these coaches use uh different you know their leadership skills to to get everyone to do what you're out there trying to do and that's go win you know it's it's hard getting that's a, that's a thing about pro football you know or pro sport you know it's hard for you got a guy making 35 million dollars you know what is he really scared of or is he really which is different because they want to work together, but you know what I mean? It's, it's how do you get everyone on the same page? And that's hard with a 53 man locker room right now. I you got to have a, you got to have, you have, a, you have to have a group that's willing. There's got to be a group that wants to sat, you know what I mean? The, and that's, that's the chemistry of winning. Did like, you, did you, is, is there, is there like a recipe for success when you look at a locker room? This podcast is sponsored by Groove Life. The Groove Life wallet is a sleek, low profile wallet. This is a very different one that I have. This is one I got on their website that goes on the back of my phone, and I absolutely love it. But the first one I ever found was I saw it at an outdoor store. It is a sleek uh, wallet engineered for everyday use. One simple thumb motion, perfectly fans up to six cards for easy access to find everything you need. With its durable, high-quality aluminum outer shell, this wallet is unlike any wallet I've ever seen. I gave one to our bus driver uh, because he's always, he always has his wallet in his pocket, and it's sleek. It's nice. I gave him the Titanium One Plus. Groove Life just launched their new carbon fiber wallet. No, that's the one I gave him. That's the one I gave him, the carbon fiber one, which has everything you love about the original Groove, Life Groove wallet, but with the added carbon fiber included, which at, whatever happens to your Groove Life gear, they are here to help. With the Groove Life 94 year no BS warranty. And the Groove Wallet is the last wallet you're gonna need. I'm telling you right now, I love it, but I wanted to skinny up my life. So I got the one that goes on the back of my phone. And I don't even, it's so funny. I never think about a wallet anymore. Listen, it's 2024. Are you still using the same wallet from 2004? Now's the time to update your wallet game with Groove Life. Head to GrooveLife.com slash Burt20 for 20% off all GrooveLife products. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my link. 
GrooveLife.com slash Burt20 for 20% off your order. One last time, that's GrooveLife.com slash Burt20 for 20% off your order. Like, I, I'm obsessed with the Bucks right now. I'm a big Bucks fan. I grew yeah. up in Tampa. Yeah, yeah. And I, and, uh, and I talked to Doug Williams, yeah. and he was he was making assessments of what's going on in the Bucks locker room and Baker. And I'm always curious, like, like how important how important is like a quarterback who takes ownership of the team, juxtaposed with a coach, just to po- like with with contract negotiate. Like I'm watching what's happening with the Bucks, and I'm just like. Seems like there's a lot of loose cannons, and <laughs> and but I love the way Baker Mayfield plays. I love that it's like he's got a chip on his shoulder. And I, Doug Williams told me that, yeah. and I was like, oh, that's what I like about him. Yeah, <laughs> but like, how important is that recipe? Well, I think the on on I don't I can only speak of my you know of my experience, and a lot of the times it's a quarterback league. Yeah, I have a quarterback. Yeah, okay, quarterback everything. This is you know you don't have a quarterback, you're not winning. Look at everyone in the playoffs right now. Yeah. You, know, the, you can say what you want about Baker Mayfield. Guy's got a playoff win in Cleveland. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, Bake, Bake's been, you know, he's been balling this year for the opportunity that he's had. Now, I don't like what they've done these last few weeks. They they made it a lot harder than what they've had. They haven't had a great execution, but whatever. But for that recipe, your best players in the locker room have to be your hardest workers. There has to be a nucleus of guys. However many there is, but on all my teams, there were a nucleus of guys where Coach Belichick was Congress. He wrote the laws. Yeah. We were the motherfuckers out there policing it. We were the sheriffs. You know, we were the guys making guys accountable. The Matthew Slaters, the Tom Brady's, the Rob Ninkovich's, Devin McCourty's. You know, the the the... The there, there's countless guys, but we had a, a huge nucleus. The bigger you get that group where your highest paid guys and your leaders are the ones working the hardest, then everyone else has to, then all those other sheep have to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or or you're not there or or you feel weird or you know what I mean? So that 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 was always what I saw from our success. You know, like our best players, our studs, were studs for a reason, and they worked their dicks off. We practiced hard. We made everyone accountable. You know, the coaches, they they put the template out there. They wrote the law. Now, now, the leaders, you go and you fucking police it. You go sheriff it. You know what I mean? That that's what I think you need. You know, because go to some teams and your quarterback's the highest guy in the team, and he, you know, he's got this, he's got that, he's not relatable with the guy. All of a sudden, he's out early or this, that, and guys are sitting there looking like, what the fuck? I mean, he's making that money. He's he left early the building. He's not working hard. Why yeah. the fuck do I? I'm not, you know. But if you see a guy like Tom Brady working his dick off, who's got five Super Bowls already, three Super Bowls when I got there, he I saw him working. I was like, shit. If he's working like that, I better work like that, or I ain't gonna make it here. That's what it is. Yeah. Did you did you show up? Did you show up game days? Uh, like I always wondered because sometimes I'll go to the, like last night. I did not want to do a spot. Yeah. I did not want to go on stage. I had nothing original to say, and I was just like, I'm going through the motions. And then I ended up having a really great set. And I was and I was wondering two questions. Literally, was like, what Monday? What hurt the most on your body? And then, but Sunday when you went into a game, were you always like, did you have games where you're like, I feel fucking amazing today and didn't perform versus days where you're like, ah, I'm fucking beat. And then you're like, wow, that was a crazy fucking game. Um, I've had, I never felt great. I never had a, a game where I felt great going into where it, you know, I, I individually didn't play well. Yeah. I may have lost. But if I had a great week of practice and I was confident going into the game, it usually translated to game. Did you have to do different things in practice to get ready for different games? Well, that we the, that's the coaches. The coaches, they're the ones who plan that and, and put you in that situation. So, yeah, 
you know, they would design and be the architect of how practice went, which a lot of the times on Wednesdays were first and second down. Thursdays were third down emphasis for offense. And then Fridays were red area and with a little bit of everything. And on each of those days, you had drills leading up to those team, like the team periods, which is the whole team, like your, your offense versus scout team defense or regardless you had drills that led up to the coaching points that we had going into the keys of the week against that specific team. And this is so fascinating to me because I feel like I, I've, and this is going to sound so n- non tangential. I think that's the right word. But I don't know what that means. I don't even know what that means. Good. Well, let's good. pretend it means. I thought, it, I thought you said tangerine. Yeah. <laughs> but like when I, I listen to people get ready for a special. And they're like, yeah, I'm going out this month. I'm going to do, I got like a couple weekends. And then I shoot next month. I'm going to do some spots in the city. And I'm so obsessive about getting ready for a special that I put it on a calendar. I mark the dates I have booked already. And then I, in my head, and this is where I'd love to have a coach. But I, in my head, go, okay, well, if I have, so like I'm shooting my special in July. And so I go, all right, I put it on a calendar. I was like, that is not enough. That is not enough. Uh, spots. So then I, I come up with, I count all the numbers of days and then I go, all right, if I did three spots a night, every night I should be ready. I know that I'd be ready. And then I go, well, I can't do it every night. So now I got to plan six spots on these nights. And then I, I, I really put it down. I get very, I, being prepared is there is no better feeling yeah. than coming into something going, I've done all the hard work to get here. I'm ready for this. I don't need prompter. Everything's in here. And I'm in a flow state. Yeah. And uh, and for me, I don't drink like a month going into a special. Yeah. I, I, I'm like real strict about sleep. and But that getting prepared is like so fucking. Well, that's, the, that's, that's what a great coach does. That's what, a, that's what a coach does. That's a coach's job. That's what every one of these teams is trying to find out. The architect of what makes the preparation the preparation through the week how you travel how you do this how you do that you know how what's monday look like what's tuesday look like what's the day off look like what's that that's the coach yeah ultimately so you can go out and perform once a week on sunday for 3 hours at the absolute height of what you can perform at that's what a great coach does and, and that's why i always felt bill, bill was the best coach i ever had because I always felt like practice was fucking hard, man. And then once by the time you got through practice, you had the answers to the test. And that was because of the coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you practice it. You had a, a rep at it. You felt confident doing it. You know, that like I said, you, you go from take it from the classroom to the drills to the team period. You know, because it, it all it's all cohesive and it all works together. And... and and that's what a great coach does. I mean, you should look into getting a, a coach that can design that. I was, I had, this is going to sound horrible to say, but at one point I was like, I want to get a comic, a, a, like a legacy comic, a big comic that's older to tour with me and kind of put me, like be like, like kind of coach me through my special. But then I realized I don't, you know, I mean this with all respect to anyone I would think, but like I do things my I do things my way and I think I'm doing them at a high level and I'm do I I should in effect I think I'd be a great coach yeah. I think I, I looked at one person talking about getting ready for a special and I was like I told him my system and they're like that's undoable yeah and I was like no it's not you just got to make sacrifices yeah you got to go okay so that does it I'm staying on the wheat road for two weeks I'm going to do spots in fucking Wyoming I'm going to do spot I'm going to take the bus into and I have, I have the luxury of having a franchise that has money so I can I can go out of pocket to do more Stuff that doesn't make sense financially. Yeah. But uh, sometimes those hit though. What? Sometimes those hit. Yeah. The more you do that stuff, the cooler, you know, like sometimes it's kind of like old stuff that I used to like do endorsement stuff or you do something like that. You're like, ah, money's not there, but it's a cool experience. You gain maybe something out of it. And then all of a sudden, 25, six years later, the equity you got from that company. You know, something you never know. Did you know you'd be doing what you're doing now while you were playing football? No. I was really focused on just football. Really? And I made like short form content on YouTube mm-hmm. and Instagram. I was, I used to make these like little spoof videos, smoothie time, burger time, all that shit. And that was really just an outlet just to, you know, when social came in, 
and I was part of that generation, it, it gave us an opportunity and a platform to show people our personality a little bit outside of football, especially where I played in New England, where you know you, you were expected to handle the media a certain way when it came to football. Um, I just did stuff that I I enjoyed doing with with you know creating that content, and then you know once I had a good team around me as well um, for off the field stuff. And oh, great team. Yeah. Your company is really impressive. Coast, I said that to you off air. Yeah. And I'll say it again. That one podcast we did, there, you guys, I a phrase I love, you guys uh, use that cow hoof to heal. Like you, you, every bit of that was, was amazing. I was really so impressed because I'm in a group of people that are really good at that. Yeah. And then to go see the way you did it, I literally was like, holy fuck. Yeah. They, 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 you know, everyone at Coast Productions, you know, they, they've been, we've been together for a long time. Kyler is soft, Jack. Um, they're all studs, man. And, and, and they take their, their job serious. Yeah. And, you know, I, I've kind of tried to handle my off the field life a lot like how I saw a team being ran. Now there's a whole lot of different variables, but like there's a lot of stuff that I've taken from being part of one of the greatest organizations and pro sports from head coach, owner, court. You know, there's a lot of stuff you get to learn on how to build a team. Yeah. You know, so I've had a great team around us for that. And then when I retired, you know, I, I didn't know really what I was going to do. I knew I wanted to create. And, you know, so I I started our production company. We had our production company. We did uh, 100% on Showtime, which was Showtime's best sports doc that we did when I tore my ACL. And then we did a partnership with the NFL to promote um, the Mexico game, Mexico City game with Danny Amendola which was awesome. So I, I started creating stuff when I was playing a little bit. And I relied a lot on my team because I wanted to keep my mind on the game. Yeah. But I would be in here and there. And then once, you know, football was done, we wanted to take it to another level. And, you know, a lot of opportunities got presented to me. And, and I did inside the NFL. And we booked, uh, you know, over on Paramount. And, and it kind of led into one thing. And, Started doing podcasts and I enjoyed it. And you're like, let's just, you know, I, we came up with games with names. It's a cool, cool concept that, you know, is great for my schedule and evergreen podcast where you get to talk with, you know, some of the greatest sports stars in the world and in the greatest games that we've ever seen. You know, that was kind of something cool. I've been a part of a lot of them. Great games. So I thought it would be. Yeah, a, a good little mix. And, you know, honestly, I'm just throwing shit at the wall. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I love being a dad. I'm, you know, and, and you got to kind of dream life right like, now. I, I, you're, I, I, I would argue, do you think you're more successful today than when you were playing? Not yet. Not yet. No, I'm still oh, early I think stage. You're fucking killing it. No, I'm still like 2020 or 2012 me. I'm right in the. <laughs> Um, I'm 2012 me where in football world we're like, oh, you see something is there. Let this, let, let, let's, let's get some consistency and let's go. Who's your white whale for games with names? White whale. I would love Jordan. Yeah. I think that'd be awesome. Coach Belichick would be fucking awesome. I would love to sit on a mic with him and just do my impression in front of him. <laughs> I would love to see how because he he already bust my balls. I saw him over at training camp earlier this year. And fucking look at him. Every time I turn on the goddamn TV, you're doing an impression of me. Can you just shut the fuck up? <laughs> like I I, I want to do that in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I just want to. I know the face he's gonna give. He's just gonna give that little. Yeah. No, uh, so that would be. I think Bill would be awesome. And I think Jordan, Jordan would be really cool. Jordan would be great. Yeah, he's someone he could get me to do wild shit. Yeah, he. I'd like to. I'd like to. I like. I, I'm not a big gambler, but I gamble big with him. Dennis Rodman would be fun too. 
He's gettable, I bet. Yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> I, I think we're, we're we're planning on something with him, but I think that'll be a fun episode. Fuck yeah. Um, you know, there's there's a few, man. And that's the cool thing about games with names that like it's got a lot of life where you can always dig into the past or the present. You know, we might get one of one of the national champions on the on the podcast coming up this week. Potentially, excuse me. Jameis Winston? No. <laughs> I know Jameis Winston. <laughs> what about Jameis and fucking calling his boy's number on a blowout like that? Did you see that? I didn't see it. I, I just met him the so other he, night. So what, what, what happened, the Saints were blowing out the Falcons. Yeah. Last game of the year. Victory formation at the end of the game on the one-yard line. Victory formation, everyone knows, game's over, you take a knee. Well, Jameis, in victory formation, decided to hand the ball off to the running back, which, you know, probably didn't get a lot of time, probably works very hard during the season, probably, you know, some guy that he wanted to get him a touchdown, Yeah, which I understand that. But, like, in football, that's like a no-no. Really? Yeah, you can't line up. It's like you line up and that you're oh, is you're that succeeding why the defeat. coach told you're, the guy to go fuck himself? Well, Arthur Smith, who's also on the hot seat at the time. Yeah. He's sitting there. He doesn't know if he's got a fucking job. And the other coach goes and lays it out on him on the last play of the game. Arthur gets fired the next day. So that's that's why he got mad because he was already on his way out, potentially on the hot seat. And then they go and they fucking, it's kind of like rubbing it in. Yeah. So that that whole thing was, I mean, that's. And that's, Jameis did it on his own. That's what they say. I heard someone. That's uh, I heard Shannon Sharp going off on Jameis Winston. It's. I mean, that's a bad look for. That's a bad look by the Saints, especially in the division where you're gonna have to see that team twice a year, and they're gonna fucking remember that. Yeah, they're gonna remember that. Like that. That was kind of that. 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 That's a no no. Fuck. I'm all for you know, you know. We, there's been times where we were blowing people out. And, you know, we threw and we, we scored some extra. You, yeah, stop us. Yeah. But you, there's a fine line. <laughs> when you line up in victory formation, which is you're telling the other team. Yeah. We're taking a knee. And you fucking hand it off. When you're already up two scores. Yeah. And the coach and the team's about to get dismantled. Fuck. So it was, it, that was. What's going to happen to Jameis? Uh, I. I. I don't know. A lot of that coaches are petty and you know what I mean? That's who knows. It's not that's 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 a tough situation where I don't know the ripple effect that that could have. Fuck. You know, which on Jameis's side you can argue, oh, he's trying to get his boy a touchdown who doesn't play that. And I get that too. But you can't go into victory formation and hand the ball off. It's like when, do I think it was the Bucks when so, someone was just going to take a knee and their defense rushed hard to try to cause a fumble. That's different really? because they're down. Yeah. The defense is down. So if they can get a fumbled snap and get the ball, that's fair game. Yeah. Offense can't do that, especially when you're up three scores. I mean, the, the defense wasn't even fucking... So that's why that coach came out and was like, go fuck yourself. That's why it was a big, that's a, yeah. Fuck. That's basically like raising a white flag at war. Yeah. When they had the lines and the two leaders come up and they're at the end of the war. The guy who raises his right white flag goes to the other leader and just shoots him in the head. <laughs> that's pretty much what it is. That's fucking crazy. Do you, I, that, I wonder what I wonder what happened to Jameis. I think he gets a bad rap. I mean, I think he's just a eccentric type guy. Yeah. Where you know he's a, he's probably a goofball at heart. Has fun, you know. But he's a backup quarterback. You can't do that. No. That's too bad. I just met him the other day. He was very nice. Oh, he's a, he's probably an awesome guy to he's, hang out with. He was hilarious. I said he came up and he said, uh, "Bert Kreischer," and I went, "You know who I am?" He goes, "Nope." Someone just told me your name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean he 
he's exciting to watch because yeah. you don't know what he's going to do. He's going to throw a touchdown or a pick or some crazy. He, he's notorious for those plays. You just can't do that. That's like football guys. They they remember that. Dude, how 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 hard is preparing for the for your job now when you go do NFL Sundays? <laughs> It's gotten easier now that I, I, I've i kind of gotten a routine because that's what you're constantly trying to do to refine your routine to get the best efficiency out of it. And, you know, uh, I, I, I basically, I meet with the production, their, their producers on Tuesday, my boy Jarrett and Jeremy, and we'll sit and Sam, we'll sit and we'll just talk what the show may shape out to be. Yeah. And I'll just kind of free ball it off of my knowledge. And while I'm doing it, they're kind of writing it down and stuff. And and so I'll, I'll go over, they'll say like on this segment, we're, we're talking Ram or uh, Ravens and this. And so I'll just go on what's off the cuff of my head. And yeah. when I'm there, oh, all right, Lamar Jackson's having a great year. I want to know his, I want to know his, What's his stats for running third down and red area? Like, and I'll be saying that while I'm going on my spiel and they'll, they'll kind of take all that information and then we'll go over it again on either Friday or Thursday. And then we'll kind of shape it up again. And also I'll watch games after, you know, that first meeting and I'll kind of like, after thinking about what I said, I'll watch a couple games. I'll watch, you know, certain teams that if we're talking about, I want to see firsthand. Because when you watch the game, you, know, you, you watch all the games on Sunday. But if you sit down and watch each game, you could pull so much information just from watching the game. Yeah. You know, and a lot of guys probably don't, you know, in this world, you got to watch games. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um. So I'll watch important games. And then I'll kind of go over storylines, headlines, what what the what's going around in the landscape of the league? What are people talking about? Is it easy for you? It's become I don't think it's easy because it's work. You got to put work in yeah. and I I am I'm, I'm constantly thinking about I'm constantly listening to content and trying to digest shit and, and watch shit just to perform on, you know, that 1 hour on Sunday like yeah. Bill said, 3 hours a week, once a week. Um so, you know, I, I feel like we have a good routine going and, you know, Fox has been awesome with the resources that they give me with like, we got stat guys and stuff. We got people that do the research for us. So if yeah. I have questions, I could just text my guy, Jerry. I'm like, yo, I want to know the third down efficiency for the Rams, Chargers, Niners, and, you know, and then wow. I can, I can see all that. And then that's where you could see like, all right, that's why they have a problem. They're not doing good in this. They're not doing good in that. Let me watch the film. All right, there's three plays through picking the red ear. You know what I mean? See, that's how you kind of formulate it. You kind of try to take in, you you kind of try to take in the film work that you used to do when you were playing and, and, and you, you, it's this kind of the same. Does, do you have a do you have chat threads? And I'm only doing this because we do this as comics. Do you have chat threads with the old players you play with? Oh yeah, where you guys talk shit about people you don't like all day. Really? Yeah. <laughs> or you or you, there's you know did you see that fucking play by that guy? That was fucking amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you get those. Who's in your chat thread with you and Brady? Do you have a, do you have like a four man chat thread? There's a we have we have one with me Brady Gronk Dola. Um, we don't hit that as much. Tom, you know, he's he's busy. Yeah. It's me and Amandola, Ninkovich have a little something. Me, Gronk, Dola have something. Gronk seems like he's so much fucking fun. He is. Really? Yeah, he's just like a golden retriever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just yeah. happy. Yeah. Just, what does he do? What does that go? Is he running on the lawn doing push-ups? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's Gronk. Like, literally... Gronk, you know, it's been really fun this year because we've gotten to be on the same team again. He's with yeah. Fox. I'm with Fox. And it's felt like exactly what it felt like when we were playing in the locker room. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, he'll come over. He flies in from, a, you know, the East Coast when he does the show. And he'll come over to my house on a Saturday. We'll do a podcast or we'll just sit and order food and we'll sit in the hot tub. He loves my hot tub because it's salt water. He... <laughs> 
he, he thinks he, he always talks about the salt water making his body feel so good. Or we'll do like a, a cold plunge in a, a sauna sash. We do shit that we used to do in the locker room. For real? Yeah. And, and that's what we do and watch football. Like, what is, like, I'm curious, like, because people always are like, oh, what's Joe like? You know, because yeah. Joe's like, Joe's our Brady, you know, yeah. really. But there's, it's funny because people's assessment of what they think Joe's like is not anything what he's like. Yeah. Like, he is. Like the things that, like when you see him one-on-one, -on -one, the things you talk about are not the conversations people think you're going to have. Yeah. We're not talking about aliens. We're not talking about fucking vaccines. Oh, we are talking about vaccines. <laughs> but we're, but Joe's like, Joe's interests are so fucking bizarre that I often, th my dad got to experience it once. Yeah. My dad, my mom and dad came out and we, me, Joe, and my mom, my parents went and got stem cells together. And Joe... And I just gossiped. And my dad's like, I didn't, I didn't see that in him. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's Joe. It was just bullshit. Yeah. And he's like, I thought he'd be talking about fucking aliens and, and fucking all the, all the things you see on his podcast. But he's just like, a, he's just a comic. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. Like, what are the things that where you're like, oh, fucking here, we, Gronk's going into this again. Gronk's always big on, like, he, he was really good with numbers. He's really good with numbers somewhat. I never in a million years thought you'd yeah. say that. No, like, and he's got, Gronk can remember things very well. Like, I'll sit there, I'd be like, yeah, what's that guy getting paid? And Gronk, and Gronk will be like, he's getting three for 120. And he's getting, you know, like, he knows. Really? He's really good with that. He's, he's, he honestly, he just loves, hanging out and doing nothing and chilling bro and he loves like doing good things for his body like yeah. when we were playing we would sit and watch tv because there's a lot of downtime where you you, you want to stay out of the light you want to just kind of do nothing because you're recovering you know what i mean and we'd sit and watch tv and at every commercial we would sit and do 30 push-ups something like that just really? to get jacked you want to go to protein shake <laughs> all right let's go you know while he's breaking down fucking the square root of fucking 9,000. Yeah. It's, it's it's cool. I mean, he loves his dog. Like, he, he's just a... Everyone thinks he's just a meat. He's <laughs> not. He's actually, like, real sharp. Really? Real sharp. He, he's, got a, he's got a memory like an elephant, which they have great memories. I, th I, have, I think so, yeah. right? Yeah. They got great memory. He's got a memory like an goldfish elephant. Goldfish have bad memories. Yeah, he, not, not a goldfish. That's me. <laughs> That's um, me. So like it's just funny though when he picks something up or he always he always surprises me with like just a somewhere out of nowhere kind of comment really on yeah god damn i and, was and he's just you you feel happy he's got like a he has a really great heart you that's, know that i mean that that comes through yeah Gronk seems like the guy everyone wants to bump in next to a bar and just have him put his arm around you and go, come on, let's go. He, and that's the problem sometimes because everyone wants to do that with them. Yeah. And he does, he does, he gets like shell, he gets almost like an anxiety. I mean, when we go out with Gronk back when we were all in our heyday, he was like a fucking rock star, bro. We would go out and people would find out, you know, we'd go to a concert or a Red Sox game. They'd see him in the, in the van. They'd be, People would be fucking rushing the van, shaking the van, Gronk! <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And he gets he gets nervous a little around that kind of shit. Like he he has his character and he does his thing, but he likes his close little group of friends, and he loves his little dog. He got this little um, Frenchie, Ralphie, and he he just likes doing that. You realize you guys could do a live podcast tour in arenas, like if you did, if you did live podcasts or. <laughs> If you did a live podcast with Gronk or Danny Amendola, like if you guys did like a a touring of, hey, we're gonna come up do a live podcast, take questions, that would be fucking epic. Well, Bert, we we do have something in the making here coming soon. For so real, we might have a little live live show coming in Boston here soon. That's fucking awesome. I've I've done a lot of that. I used to do that stuff where we go and I go to colleges when I was playing and do like these Q and A's and amphitheaters and they were always so fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, know, you get a great, but you're crowd. really good in front of people. Well, yeah. Yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take a five seconds pee break? Yeah, go ahead, please. What's yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh. We're almost at two hours. <laughs> the asses on athletes is always impressive. <laughs> Bigger Mayfield's got a fucking donk. <laughs> See, I'm in these. My chat threads are fucking awesome. I'm in- my chat thread, I got one. I got a couple really good ones. I have one from a bachelor party. Oh, I've one from my Rogan chat threads. My favorite. My fucking favorite. We're on, we do social threat. Like, there's a lot of, we'll have like an Instagram chat group, shit like that. What do you, what, what's your algorithm look like on Instagram? A lot of food. Really? A lot of food. A lot of travel shit. Yeah. I like, I'm like a little, I get in a little wormhole of like, uh, when you see like a fucking bedside on a fucking cliff. Oh. You know what I mean? You're like, oh shit. So, so what I do is I, like some I, post ranch and shit. I do this with my daughters. Like when we plan a trip, like we're going to Iceland or Iceland. Yeah. I love those kind of, those videos or those. So what I do is I go on everyone's phone and I type in Iceland as a hashtag and we all follow Iceland. And then we start a chat thread with each other of places we like and then send it to each other. And so we did, we just did a trip to, well, we did a trip to Italy. And so I followed Italy on everyone's thing. I then followed all the cities we'd be going to Italy and then I go, anything you guys see, send it to the group, and then we'll do it. And it was fucking awesome. You know what? I, I've picked that up from you, and we've hung out a couple times now. You you write your shit down. Like, if you if you have a plan, like that right there, that's that's so thoughtful. And, like, just writing it down and, and yeah. going. If you put something down, like, we're going to Italy, and you you highlight that, and you put that in your own. Like, you do that a lot, huh? Oh, yeah. But I'm, yeah. I... I I love, I've said this That's so cool. much that I don't know if it means anything anymore, but I love loving stuff. Yeah. I love loving stuff. I had, uh, I, my algorithm is like, I mean, it's fucking bizarre, but I'm, I love, uh, I love getting excited for something. Mm-hmm. Like uh, I, every year I'll plan, I'll look at my year and I'll go, like this December was a perfect example. I was like, all right, we're going to the sphere. So I have that to look forward for that week. And then the next week, we're going to get a box of the Rams game. Um, and I got that to look forward to. And then we're going to the Eagles. And then we're going to go like the band. And so like, I love planning stuff out. Like tomorrow we go to Mexico to see the dead. And then I come home Desperado. and then I'm doing. Oh, I love the Eagles. I flow with Joe, Joe, Joe Walsh once. For real? Yeah, we, we shared it. We did uh, the country. Mu- I, I cut you off. Country nope. Music Awards. He went to Kent State. We went to the same college. Really? Yeah. We flew back and it was so fucking cool. I was such a life in the fast lane. Life in the f- that, that's, well, that's Don Henley. Well, that, didn't he laugh? In, or no. Uh, Don Henley wrote, you ready for this? this is my favorite little footnote ever. Don didn't Hen- he? Joe Walsh sang it though. No. What, or no. What What am I? Don Henley's past. Glenn Fry. My Maserati goes, goes That's on. That's, uh, that's, um, that's uh, he played that. Joe Walsh. Yeah, life's been good to me. Yeah, life's been good to me. Life's uh, been yeah, good I to love that me one. so far. He played... Uh, I asked him about Hotel California because we all think it's about like doing heroin in a... Yeah. You know? He said, nah, not really. I've been to the hotel they wrote it about. Yeah, he said it was a place where they used to just gather content. He didn't shoot the fact down that they used to do drugs at... Oh, yeah. You know, but he was like... You know, we just go there and write music. I was high as fuck, and they played Hotel California, and I, I mean, I'll get emotional thinking about it, but we stayed at that hotel in Mexico. It's in Mexico, yeah. the hotel they wrote it about, and there's, uh, you, you hear the church bells ring. Yeah. I mean, I get chill bumps, and I took a jog that night at sunset before we started drinking. I took a jog around that area, and then walked, and then drank it in, and then went and got a cocktail. Champagne and I listened. all nice. Oh, we are all just, just prisoners, prisoners here. Of our my own wife can life. sing any lyric of any Eagles song. For, she Life in the Fast Lane. Don Henley wrote that he was in a he was in a car with a drug dealer f- driving down the PCH in Malibu. Yeah, and the guy had a lot of coke on him. He was like, Don, Don Henley said he was holding a lot, and he was going like ninety seven miles an hour. And Don Henley's like, Hey man, maybe we should slow down. You know, we got a lot of weight on us. And the drug dealer looked at him and he goes, life in the fast lane. And Don Henley's like, that's, that's Don Henley's gift was, and I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing from w- things I've seen online. He, uh, he was really great at 
get, coming up with titles. He was at Dantana's one night, yeah. right? Him and him and uh, Don Henley, uh, J- Glenn Fry, and their manager Irving Azoff, a- or I think his name. And there was a young girl with an older man, and he, and Don Henley just looked at me. He goes, "Look at those lion eyes." And then they wrote the fucking song, dude. The Eagles delivered. Oh Joe Walsh played Rocky Mountain High, and Love I that. fucking. I hit my vape pen probably five times too many and I had it in my pocket. I just kept on and blowing it into my shirt and I was like, fuck, it was epic. Hotel California is a top five song of mine all the time. Top five songs. You want played at your funeral. Oh, that one is there. Like whenever I'm under the bridge, Chili Peppers. Ooh. Like that one. That came out around the same time uh, Cherry School came out. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I would have to say The Thizz Dance by Mac Dre. I'm a Bay guy. Yeah. Love that thizzle. (laughs) Uh, Bob Seger's Rambling Grambling Man. Love Bob. Turn the Page by Bob Seger. We'll just keep it in classic rock. Yeah. Bob Seger, uh, Turn the Page. I used to play that when I would train. Like, uh, fucking Credence Clearwater Revival. Uh, what's the fucking song? This song, not to like. Happy. No, no, no. This that is, one. No, I'm gonna play it for you. This is my so simple man. Leonard Skinner is my dad. Like my dad used to sing. No, no. For, Fortunately, song I come out to on stage. Credence. So, at the bottom of my career, like not the bottom, bottom, but it was a bottom. I thought it was my real bottom. I had been fired from Travel Channel. Uh, my wife was redoing our house. I was not selling tickets. I got pulled off a tour. I had that many tour dates. No one watched my Showtime special. And my best friend, Tom Segura, was fat shaming me. And we're doing Rogan three days in a row to do weigh-ins to see who lost the most weight. And the loser has his beard shaved. And I was coming home from a weekend in Oxnard where I had sold no tickets. And the guarantee was twenty five grand. I lost the money. And I was like, I'm fucked. I don't know how I'm going to fucking... Like, I don't know where where my career's going and I'm driving home to drive to Rogan's at like six in the morning. And I drank the night before and I'd eaten a pot roast. So I knew I was losing this weight loss challenge and I'm hungover, still driving. And the sun's coming up with the sun's coming up on the one Oh one. And this song plays I fucking. And then I, I had a weird <coughs> moment where I realized it's going to be okay. I can be in charge of my own destiny. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to take charge of me. Fuck everyone else. I'm going to do my thing. And that's me moving forward. And then that night, the machine story went viral, random as fuck. I did Rogan and I sold out every show from that point until today. I've had the best fun. And I I attribute to Credence the entire. So I want that played at my funeral. I want changes. That's a great song though. That's a great fucking song. It's a great song. It's a great song. I was just thinking when it dropped, just two doves. When the doors open, you said the shine lighting on. Oh, yeah. I want two doves coming out. I'll bring them to your funeral. I'll walk in with a jacket with two doves in my pocket, and everyone will be sitting around, and Gronk's like, is he a magician? <laughs> I go, no, it's a thing. Where I told him on a podcast. Uh, you'll see. You'll see. And then the doors will open, and I go, 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 go. And they'll go. And Just Tom, two. Yeah. And Tom Brady's going to go, you know, he, he said that one time, you wanted doves flying. <laughs> And who's that fat guy in the yeah, jacket? Tom will still be feathers. living by then. This Tom will be 140 by then. <laughs> this fucking guy. We're okay. We're gonna get you out of here. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to travel to that you haven't been to? <laughs> Japan. Oh, it fucking delivers. I want to go to Japan. My my bucket list right now. I want to go to Japan. I want to go to Brazil. Brazil's amazing. I know. I want to go. St- for I spent the night in favelas at, in Brazil. I heard it. Is it sketchy? Yeah, fuck yeah. I want to go I, now, dude. Even more. I went, we took a motorcycle up into the favelas and I got lost inside the favelas walking around. Yeah. We got lost and I ended up playing a soccer game with a bunch of kids inside a, uh, the soccer field is a, is like a basketball court, all, all, all concrete. Oh yeah. And all the buildings were up against the wall. It was in the middle of all these buildings. Like cathedral, and yeah. it was fucking epic. Brazil's fucking awesome. I would love. I would. I want to. If I do Brazil, I want to go Brazil, Argentina, mm-hmm. Japan. I want to do Japan. Fuck yeah! Toilets are amazing there. I've heard the Totos. I took a. I, I took a shit so bad in Japan. The guy in the stall next to me threw up, 
And uh, I thought he was trying to talk to me because we were in Japan. He's like, Ugh. and I was like, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, I want to go there. Yeah, it's awesome. I want to. So, <laughs> and then uh, I haven't really done Italy properly. I've only been to Rome. I need to do that. I need oh. to do the Malfi Coast. Is that what it? Yeah, I haven't. The Malfi done Coast any. is gorgeous. The whole, all of Florence. Yeah, I haven't traveled that much. I've uh, only, you know, I mean, I've. I kept it pretty domestic when I was playing. I was too nervous. I went to Israel a few times. I've been to Israel a bunch. Like, Where do you want to take your daughter? I want to take her. She likes beaches and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, we took. I took her to Hawaii last year. She loved that. So somewhere, I want to take my family to like Greece or something like, you know, something like that. My dad wants to go out there. He's never been to Europe. So... Somewhere with like a warm climate, beautiful. The Mediterranean coast would be beautiful. Fucking gorgeous. The food. Greece is picturesque. I just, yeah, yeah, it's, Greece is like what you see in the postcards is still Greece. Yeah. Fucking amazing. That blue water. I don't know. I mean, those are off top of my head. I'm trying to get a Japan trip in this year. I, you know, I'm still in like football. After like the Super Bowl, because I still have a lot of work when it comes to football. With all, you know, obligations when the Super Bowl comes, there's a lot of stuff I have to go do. After that, that's when I'll, you got to sit down and play. Japan's easy. Seven hour flight, fly American, you fly right in. Yeah. It's fucking incredible. And then you Yeah, but get- I need to, I want to, if I go to Japan, I need to, lo- I need to link up with a local that knows, you know, I- I'll tell you where to go. I, so I, when I worked at Travel Channel, I went to the best places to go. I, I did the trips of a lifetime. Yeah. So every trip I took was the trip of a lifetime. So we went to Kyoto, had a geisha, dinner with a geisha. She came into my room in the middle of the night, drew a hot bath for me outdoors. It was snowing and then woke me up, got me into the hot bath. And it was like, and then uh, said to me in very broken English, we're getting ready to travel that day. Can I get you something? And I said, wouldn't mind a cold beer. She came back with an ice cold tall boy. And I went, oh, I sat in a fucking hot tub while Snow. it snowed in Kyoto outside. It's still dark. And I had this geisha just waiting on me, and I murdered that fucking beer. Well, what time of year was that? Winter. It was snowing in Japan there. We went swimming with whale sharks uh, in Japan. We did uh, we did everything. It was the fucking... It, Japan is so beautiful, and it's crazy because you've never seen anything like it. Yeah. On the subways, no one speaks. Outside the subway station, no one talks. It's quiet. It's fucking safe. It is insane. And respectful, I heard. Oh, very respectful. I passed out on a on a Japanese dude on a on a train. I fell asleep on him, and this is how great Japan is. He just let me sleep. <laughs> I got a picture of it. I'll show it to he you. He let you sleep. He didn't wake me up. He just sat. Hang on, I have to show you this picture. I fucking passed out. That's the beautiful thing about the iPhone is you can pull up pictures Dates. of where you've been. I passed out on this dude. It's crazy how they got that that software in there now. Because that's, you know what I mean? All of a sudden, I'll be like, oh, shit. Look at that. Yeah, Japan. Oh, dude, we watched robot. They have these crazy robot shows. I want to go like, I want to go like hang with the samurai in like the mountains. He just, and just, let, he just let me sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I passed out on him. He didn't wake me up. He let me sleep. <laughs> At Japan. I wanna, Vietnam's fucking amazing. Vietnam. I've heard Vietnam. Yes, I've heard South Asia is like awesome. Bali's incredible. Yeah. Fiji is I, I, there's so many amazing places. I, I think once you get into those islands, they're all kind of one and the same. Yeah. But I want the cultures, when you go to different cultures, like Vietnam and and Japan are totally different. Yeah. And then uh I really want to go to India. I have a trip I want to make by myself. I yeah. want to travel by myself. And not go with anyone. No no assistance. No anything. And I want to go to India by myself. Build intrinsic value. That'll build a lot of intrinsic value. I heard that the... My buddy went there for work a bunch. And he says they use their horns like sonar when they're driving. Like... <laughs> like it's, it's like part of the how you drive. It's fucking crazy. I was told by a couple Indian dudes, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be cool to see. I mean, you know, they like they like America, dem, 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 well, the democracy over there. I think it's still the caste system, which I think is sexy. 
I don't know what even that means. But. So this way, you're born into a caste system. You can't become better than you were. No, there, <laughs> that's not true. I swear to God. I is it true? It is. Yeah, there's still a there, caste system. It's a full democracy. No, well, I'm sure, but it's not like like if you're born the kid that makes soccer balls on the side of the road, you stay the kid that makes soccer balls your whole life. And you can't talk to the people that don't make soccer balls. By the way, I would not listen to me at all. Hey, who's going to the Super Bowl? Uh, I'd say Baltimore, San Fran. I mean, that's easy. Yeah. That's that's the easy way out. I, I you know, I there's Who, no reason that Baltimore shouldn't get there. You know, if if they they scare me cuz they might get bored with the team. Yeah. You know, they got the week off. I want to see how they handle this this bye week. You know, the bye week's good and bad. It depends on if you use it correctly. Yeah. You know, the bye week's great for guys getting healthy and great for keeping your, you know, improving your team. If you have a mature team leadership, which, you know, I, I'm banking that they do. Is Lamar Jackson old enough to be a leader? Yeah. I mean, he's got the experience. Guys, yeah. I mean, he's in a six year league. Is he in he's a six? I, saw, I thought it was his fourth for Is some it, reason. Nah, he's, I think he's in six. Uh, he's a stud, man. And they got a lot of weapons around them. Sam Fran, I think it was great for them to actually lose to the Ravens earlier, humble them because yeah. they were they were looking a little, they were looking like one of those teams where you say there's they can't be beat. Yeah. And then Baltimore did what Baltimore did, so that could recalibrate them. Sam Fran's got a great. First of all, they got a great group of guys. They like do. I love Kittle. I love McCaffrey. Yeah. Those are Shane Gillis's boys. Yeah. Shane Gillis like texts them pictures of himself working out like does he, he oh yeah he, i like he he is i love shane because of how excited he gets but christian mccaffrey came to our show one time and shane just starts doing this like where he's like oh bro bro fucking christian mccaffrey's here fucking bro bro like he gets geeked out and i got excited i got fucking geeked out and then i told christian mccaffrey i thought i could catch him no <laughs> yeah i found out i couldn't that dude's a stud yeah he is but, you know, you got to, I'm still, you know, those Rams are scary. I don't know why. They're playing good football, and I don't know. But I, I'm going to go with the Niners and Baltimore. Who would you be shocked if it was in the Super Bowl? Would I be shocked? You'd be like, wow. These right two now, teams? the, the parody is, 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 is there. So you're not really shocked. There's no, like, Baltimore should but you wouldn't be shocked if Kansas City fucking found something and all of a sudden guys started catching balls because they have a great defense and they have Patrick Mahomes. Like, you wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. Do you? Can you bank on it? No. Buffalo. You got Josh Allen. I mean, he plays big in big games, but is their defense there? I don't know. Their defense, it's a veteran defense, but it just scares me. You know, going in and then they turn the ball over a bunch and you can't do that in the playoffs. Like you can get away with that in the regular season, but you start turning the ball over it, in the in the playoffs. It's the team that makes the least amount of mistakes that wins. Yeah. You know, that's what it's really about. So it's. I don't know if I said anything with all that, but uh, I would say. It's a great year because you, it, it's up for grabs. There's yeah. no there's no outstanding team other than the Baltimore Ravens, but because they're outstanding, like whenever you have an outstanding team, it just always seems like they get knocked off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like last year with Philadelphia and how they were, they had the most sacks in NFL history. They had a great offense, go and play Kansas City, and they didn't have one sack. They didn't do anything last year in the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, it, it's going to be interesting. This is this is fun. You get You get a little... You'll get a little information after this wild card weekend just because you'll see how teams are playing, who who showed up, who took advantage of it, of the week of prep. You know, who's... Is the moment too big for some of these teams? You know what I mean? So yeah. it, it's these young teams out there, like the Green Bays and the Houstons, are they going to have... That push, or are they just gonna be that? You know, oh, they're a young team. They they had they they're excited to be there. They're excited that they got to the <laughs> yeah. playoffs. Will they do anything with it? I don't know. So, are you, you going know, to the Super Bowl? I will be there. You for real? I don't know if I'll go to the game. What day do you get there? 
Uh, the Wednesday before. Uh, Tom and I get there Monday. Yeah. And we're there until Saturday. Let's do something. Let's, please, yeah. let's do something. Yeah, we'll do Dude, it, definitely. You're, you're fucking awesome, man. Get out of you are, man. You know, for real, you are fucking awesome. I'm so, uh, I've only name dropped you one time, and, I, and I'm a big name dropper. <laughs> But to Randy Moss. What did he say? I said, oh, he fucking loves you. Did he? Yeah. That's my guy. I, I'm trying I, to get him on the pod. I said, I, I randomly, I did a show with Trick Daddy. And the guys that work with Trick Daddy are good friends with Randy. And they're like, yo, Randy's a fan. You guys should get on a Zoom. And I was like, but I'm Randy Moss. Are you fucking kidding me? So I was like, a hundred percent. So we get on a Zoom and I was like, dude, I just did uh, Julian Edelman's podcast. He's like, oh, fuck. You know what I love? <laughs> like, he just, oh, he loves you, man. He's called me Edelman. Yeah, he's the fucking best. Uh, he was, I, I'm talking to him the whole time. I go, is he in a truck? Is he in a truck? And then I said, Randy, where are you? And he goes, I'm about to go fishing. And he gets out, shows me his boat. He was on the dock, on the, on the dock, talking to me, getting ready to go fucking fishing. My guy loves fishing. He loves fishing. He, I, that's all he does. It's crazy. Randy's country, man. Yeah. At West Virginia. <laughs> I love Randy, man. I learned so much from him. He was so cool. You know, I, he was a superstar when I got, you know, he's Randy Moss. Yeah. And, you know, he he was still a vet and he still put me in my place, but he always loved me too. He gave me, he loved me up a little bit when he saw, you know, when you're a rookie and especially a late round guy, guys, you know, they'll like push you around, like get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? He was yeah. always, he, he used, I used to have to go get lunches <laughs> before the, we left for travel. You know, I was a seventh round guy. I didn't make that much, but you have to go out and you have to pay for the lunches for all. And he'd always throw me a couple of 300, 400 bucks, go get the lunch. You know, he'd always take care of me. You know what I mean? He was just a fucking, but he would never, he, he didn't want, he didn't show it in front of people. It was always yeah. when there was no one around, he always looked out for me. When there were people around, I don't know, get the fuck out of my ear. <laughs> I love that he's a cool dude. Oh, he's cool Because you never know. Sometimes like, like I, I'm friends with Warren Sapp and Warren's great to me. Well, you got to be, you know, when he's those not, guys he's are He's not to Tom. Yeah. I, I told him Tom was my producer, that he wasn't a comedian. <laughs> Not when, and he fucking was like, who's this fucking producer guy? I was like, I don't know, man. He talks up a lot. <laughs> you know, guys like in in with in that category, Randy gets a bad rap just because he Randy, if he knows you, he fuck he's a lovingest dude. If yeah. he doesn't, I mean he's had a lot of shit. Yeah. You know, with public perception with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So he he doesn't trust it. Yeah. You know, he doesn't trust a, you know a lot you know but he was always a fucking awesome dude to me and I learned so much from him he was I can't wait to get him on the pod we gotta get him on oh please I'll fucking I'll just come and watch I just want to <laughs> watch live I, I we haven't got to sit and talk in a minute I, I saw we used, I used to see him you know when we were doing TV or when I was playing he was always you know he, sometimes he'd be out there and be pre-game on a Sunday night football or Monday night football game and stuff he was always cool but well, dude, yeah. I, I fucking love you, man. I think you're the fucking best. I'll see you at the Super Bowl. We'll see you there. We're going to fucking party. We got to. We'll do mushrooms like we did back in the day. <laughs> Micro, oh, macro. Macro dose. Macro dose. We'll get Tommy high. You got to get Tommy on your show. You got to. Yeah, I'm going to, I'll set it up because yeah. he's, he's, he's a big, like, he's like Shane Gillis. He's a big football whore. Who's, who's his squad? Uh, I think it's Bengals. I think he grew up in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah, he might they love be, the Bengals. Yeah, but he's more a college guy. He's obsessed with Florida State. He's a big college. He, he went to Florida State from Cincinnati. No, no, he went. No, he went to some. He went to some school and I think played football uh, when he was good looking, and then he got fat. And oddly enough, he was a lineman. I think. Yeah. But he, uh, he, I don't know. He's more. He's obsessed with Florida State. That's why we became friends. Because so I went to Florida State and he was watching a game. And I was like, hey, first night. He just loves college football. He loves college football. He knows. He probably, what's he like? Does he like it now? Yeah. Oh, it's he's changing. He tried to do a football podcast before anyone was doing football podcasts. Yeah. But I think it was really when sports podcasting wasn't very big. And everyone knew him as a comedian. And I think he, tried, he had a couple. I think he had Ricky Williams on. Yeah. I would love to pick his brain to see as probably a traditionalist college football fan. Yeah. He's probably, I mean, he, if, how he feels about what college football has become. All we do is text about Deion Sanders. 
love Dion. Fuck Dion's him. always. I went my last, my last, and then I got to go. I remember once at a Super Bowl. I always, you know, whenever I do an interview, I always say, you know, I was number twenty one because of Dion Sanders when I was a kid, and Dion must have heard it. Yeah, like I never met him, but I, I was at a a dinner at one of the Super Bowls. I looked over. And I, I saw Dion, I introduced myself, and he was cool as fuck, he, you know, and he was there with a the lovely lady, and I I left, and then all of a sudden, I was getting up to leave, and on my receipt was, it was paid by Dion, and he, he, he said, he, he just signed it, and I took the receipt. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he paid for my my dinner. That's how cool he was. He Fuck just, yeah! You know, he didn't see him. He didn't leave. Didn't he? He just paid for my dinner. I don't know how he did that. If I he left before me, he must have gave him a really good tip. I, if I'd done that, I would have I would have come over and said, "Give you a heads up. I pay for your dinner." Yeah, but it was cooler. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the cool guy. I'm the guy. Who, I'm the guy who leaves his name on GoFundMe. And we stayed there for like another hour. <laughs> we were getting drinks and stuff. Yeah, I wasn't playing. So, oh, fuck nah, yeah. But, well, thank you for doing this. Nah, man. man we got to do it again. You're the best. Uh, fucking everyone. I mean, I, I'm waiting on my teleprompter shits. It's coming. It's coming. Okay. I, I've literally been reading like little kid chapter books to hopefully, <laughs> hopefully help me. And I have to read them out loud to my kid. Before bed. Well, next time you and Gronk hot tub, just give me a call. I'll come over. All right. I fucking can't wait to just get in a hot tub with him and just go 21 plus 33. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Easy. Addition. <laughs> he only gets a little slow when you go square roots. <laughs> where he, he takes a couple seconds. Uh, you're the best, buddy. Yeah, you are, man. <laughs>